Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and it is a fine evening indeed, as we are not messing around. It's gonna be the absolute banger matchup, the last season finals repeat between Build Us, Built by Us Academy and Ablaze, of course, as we are already in the middle of pick and ban here. I'm Lithy on my side once again, Foxy himself. Good evening, sir. What are we looking at here? Oh, we're looking at some spicy games here tonight, Lithy. I don't know if you're ready for this. Don't know if you've got the popcorn, but we've already got Tom Kench out there. And that's, oof, that's what you like to see. Ah, there's a tanky top lane pick coming in, but we'll uh, take a quick peek at the bands here. Victor, Lucian, Olaf banned out here on the right side. And on the left, it's a Misfortune, Leona, and of course, a LeBlanc. Not really uh, off the rails, bands kind of very much in the in the levels of uh, what we were expecting, right? Yeah, exactly. It was kind of expected for both teams to be going for these tanks early on. Surprised to see Mundo actually for Cryon. Uh, I would have expected something a little bit more like a Scion or maybe a Poppy for him, but uh, Mundo still absolutely fits what his team has been playing around. Both teams have had very different drafts to one another that we've seen, um, or we've been able to suss out so far. Uh, Built by us are very much focused around their bot lane and team fighting, and on the other side, our players are very seem to be very much focused around that mid jungle. And you can see that that is showing up in the draft already, Trundle, being picked up for the side of Built by Us. Very strong sort of skirmisher jungler, but that also scales pretty well into those mid-game team fights around the Drakes. Mm -hmm. um, and on the other side, the Talon, very aggressive in the early game. Absolutely, absolutely. You kind of mentioned that already, that Built by Us is looking towards a little bit more of a uh, overall, overall beefy lineup in terms of more the control type mage mid laner, a beefy tanky top side and a solid bot lane while the jungler, well, does the same thing really while on the other side. We have Blaze very much focusing on the solo laners and of course Obsidian in the jungle on the more aggressive path. And so far the picks kind of reflecting that. We see the Thresh picked up as a support here on the side of Built by Us. And the Jinx with the Talon probably in the jungle for a Blaze here as we head into the next ban phase. And of course, if you th if you see a Thresh picked, a Phalios probably isn't far off the side. So ban that one away from uh, from Ken Fresno. And you're good to go for the moment. Camille ban kind of suspects Ooh. that uh, the Mundo isn't going top. Yeah, this is interesting. So that to me says that... Uh, uh, Built by us are expecting the Mundo to be flexed elsewhere, which I'm not really sure where it can go. Perhaps jungle, and then they take the Talon mid lane. But it feels very much like that was bound to, or that that it's bound to top lane. So I'm not sure if that's a bit of a mistake from them. Syndra coming out as the response ban now, uh, mm -hmm. just a decent all-round power pick for for mid lane. Um, having a look at solo queue and things like that it seems that Sting stingy or stingy i'm not quite sure how to pronounce his name has been focusing mainly on mages and control mages in general um so syndra being one of the only super powerful early champions out of those uh is a really good ban for them absolutely agree it's kind of it's kind of one of those mages, as you mentioned. It's a power pick. You can do everything. You can engage. You can farm. You can just scale a bit. And you have absolute crazy burst in the late game. But we're through the second pick ban. Galio, of course, taken out as well. Probably a little bit more aimed at uh, the support position as Braum is picked up for a blaze here in the uh, last steps of their draft. And now we're looking at an ADC as well as one of these mid laners for build. Then, wow, that's a vein. That is a vein. A Rakan hover? Well, that wouldn't really make sense, right? We already. And not that. sure the Rakan will will go through, um, unless there's perhaps a bug with the client. But uh, 
the Braun pick for me is quite interesting because one of the things that we were worried about talking before the game was how are a blaze going to protect their bottom lane from the aggression of, of you know, a mm. trundle coming down and perhaps a Tom Kench TPing. Uh, and that the kind of play style that Built by Us has. And Braum's obviously a very good pick for that. Just being able to completely stop anything coming through onto the Jinx is really, oh. really nice. Ooh. There is oh. the Annie slow. Just bait it oh. on for, for a second here. Just Dangled for a second. it in front of us. <laughs> oh. That would have been would have been an interesting pick to see for sure because there there has been a decent number of any games on Kenny, the bot lane player or the ADC player for a blaze, but it is gonna be Z the Azir decent control mage in the mid lane gonna pick pick him up against the Corky, and with the Corky that is an absolute powerhouse for the mid lane. So stingy, looking to kind of take the game into his own hands while uh, Ken on the bot side with a vein also gets going and i'm i'm really really curious if bbu with with this whole basically revamped roster i mentioned earlier it's the rematch of the last season playoffs finals where these teams uh, gone up against each other and the place actually managed to pull this one out three to two and i'm really curious if that corky if that vein if those three new players on the roster here for bbu are gonna be enough to clutch out a win here yeah, definitely going to be interesting to see. Uh, small thing to note here is that Azir is actually a pick that has not, we have not seen on uh, the side of, uh, I believe it's, yes, Monzi. Sorry. Um, I'm forgetting names already. <laughs> Usually he's been playing the more aggressive champions, LeBlanc, Twisted Fate, Akali, things that he would want mm -hmm. to be getting a a large early lead in the lane and then snowballing to other places. Azir can do that if you play it extremely well, but usually, at least from what I've seen, Azir has been more of a stopgap. Yes, you still secure the, the prio in mid lane, but it's much harder for an Azir to actually get a proper roam off than it is for, say, a, a Vex or a, a Twisted Fate. Absolutely, Azir, much more one of these mid lane control mage carry types that just scales into the late game, just sits in mid lane, farms 24 7 until, well, the team fights come in, and then you can do a lot of damage with the Empress Divide with your ultimate going in if you get a good engage. But on top of that, it seems to me, it seems to be a, a bit more disengaged. Uh, overall f comp wise from a blaze i'm not quite sure where they're going with this whole setup because the talon talon wants to go in mundo wants to go in azir braum definitely want to disengage and the jinx not really the type of ad carry that can do quick pushes uh pokes in to one shot someone like illusion can so um a little bit of a little bit of different styles within the comp of a blaze i'm a little bit worried about that but on the other side it's it's a it's even a bit more f from what we uh, expected coming out from BBU, right? We we expected the the farm heavy jungler, the the solid the solid early mid game type with a strong scaling, but put a corky mid in the mix there. That's a lot of scaling power in the mid lane here. Yeah, and they are going to run into problems on this bot side potentially in the early game. Um, we were just saying a minute ago how their playstyle seems to revolve around securing the drakes early game and then sort of forcing fights for for soul drakes uh, and winning out with an, a, a head bot lane but Vayne is not really a champion that can guarantee getting a head bot lane and braum is actually a relatively powerful pick into champions like the Vayne, especially with the jinx with so much attack speed at his side it's very easy for him to just hit a q and uh, stack up the passive very quickly and then it's all over for the vein. There's not much she can do. So that will be interesting to see. Another interesting thing to note is that uh, Jinx got buffed this patch just two days ago. I believe it dropped. Um, and the largest change is that she gets, I believe it's an extra 10% attack speed now 
when she picks up when she procs her passive. So picking up a kill or an assist in a team fight, she will now get a twenty five percent attack speed boost for a few seconds. Yep. And Talon, while probably not able to outright delete people come mid and late game on the side of uh, built by us he, he could definitely get them low enough where one or two jinx auto attacks can get her the kill can get her the pop off and she can take over the fight so it is still a very dangerous comp to walk into or the side of the place you have to you have to take your picks but on the other hand you have a trundle you have a trundle in there with a corky that's some good poke damage that's really good in terms of picking someone off and uh, i'll be quite honest the tam kench is an absolute monster in the front line he is super super tanky don't forget the thrash in the mix but overall i'm really curious how this one is gonna go uh, as you mentioned early game definitely gonna be spicy for bbu but overall i think they have the upper hand going into the late game and i'll definitely keep an eye on the mid lane on stingy on that corky because i think he is one of the players that can pop off in this matchup on the other hand of course you have that azir from monzi in the mid lane that's going to be very very interesting to watch as well yeah absolutely at these mid game fights i'm not expecting too much action in the early game just due to the the mid lane matchup itself but these mid game fights are going to be very spicy with the potential for azir shuffles absolutely all right we're just syncing up and then we're ready to go get into this matchup yep let's kick it off right here it is the first game of the evening it's a place versus built by us academy as i already mentioned it's the repeat of the last season division three playoffs and now these teams are once again measuring up against each other a little bit of a connection issues here on the side of a place but we'll get that fixed in just a second so don't worry about it you'll not miss a single second in the meantime while we wait for the post-pause spectator pause bug, Foxy, predictions, what's up? Oh, predictions. Predictions are difficult. Um, I would say that my my heart is telling me that Built by Us has this. Um, okay. But my brain is saying that I enjoy playing... Well, I, sorry, my brain is saying that Built by Us has this, and my heart is saying that I enjoy playing Jinx, <laughs> And I would really like to see Jinx pop off <laughs> and just take over this game. So, smart money is on Built by Us, but my heart goes to a place so far. Your heart is on fire indeed. There we go. All right. I'll, I'll be very honest. BBU has been looking absolutely dominant this season so far in the group stage. Five wins in a row. Haven't dropped a single game. Um, actually... Let me let me make sure I'm not I'm not talking. Okay, they they've dropped two two Maybe maps, but not all. a single series overall. So really really solid performance so far, and I'm super super curious to see how a blaze is gonna measure up against this one. Got a little I'm bit of hoping... skirmishing in the top side going on already, but both junglers starting on the bottom side of the map for now. I'm hoping this is a spectator bug, but uh, at least on my screen. Talon and Braun both don't have items. If you could... Oh, that's that's definitely a spectator bug. Yeah. Because they have items for me. The more interesting yeah. thing, let's talk about that one for a second. Kryon on the Mundo. No flash, running an ignite instead. Yeah, that is certainly interesting. And another interesting pickup. I mean, it's, it's unusual to see a tank not take flash, to be honest. Especially in a matchup like this against Tom Kench. You know, usually... He's a champion that you need flash against if he hits you with that Q. So, certainly a risky take. Another risky take that I would like to touch on is mid lane, the cull. I'm not sure if that's, again, a spectator bug for me, but from what oh, I can that's, see... That's definitely not that, a spectator that's bug. That's legit, okay. Because I'm it's... not seeing his stacks going down on cull, so I believe my client is having a nice little uh, 
play early. We'll, we'll need a big F in chat for Fox's client today, I think, but that yeah. Corky seems indeed to be working as intended. He is CSing away. That Cowl is counting down. And that's uh, that's an interesting pickup, but nothing we we don't normally see on Corky. Oh, the death sentence actually actually going in. Beautiful connection there on the bot side. Lots of damage. Trundle in the top side. Cub looking to pick up first blood because, as mentioned, there is no flash on that Mundo. Yeah, absolutely. Great pickup there. Really punishing the fact that he hasn't taken flash, and it looks like Obsidian is up here as well. Cryon oh. TPing back in. Looking to return the favor here, but Obsidian getting flashed on by BR God. That's a lot of damage. Oh, the pillar cancels the jump of the wall. Cup flashes away, and Cryon has no way of getting after him here for the moment. That is a Mundo on the dry land, even though he has that beach outfit on. BR God is looking to close this one out. Another slick of the tongue, and it is done. Another two kills on the back of that TP. Beautiful Ooh. start here for BBU. Yeah, complete, complete disaster for the side of a blaze there. That is absolutely not what they wanted. Uh, oh, and just really unfortunate. And for uh, Cub scuttle as well. Yeah, really well played by Cub so far. That pillar was expertly placed to cancel the jump from Obsidian over the wall. So very well played by him. And. It looks like on the bot lane and in mid, things are just a lot calmer, a lot more chill. So... Absolutely. I mean, we, we saw some early action with a good hook here from Wolf coming in, but overall, it's kind of what we expected, right? We we didn't really expect a high, uh, high excitement bot phase in this game, uh, much rather towards the mid, towards the top side, and especially top side has been happening. But... You've, uh, we, when we've got talking about the teams uh, before the game a little bit, you already mentioned Cub, uh, someone you've personally played with. Kind of, kind of, I don't want to say stuck, but one of the one of the junglers that prefers a little bit of a so to so off meta champ pool. He's been very committed to things like the Trundle, the uh, the Volley Bear, the uh, the Udyr, and some other things that were in there. Actually, a little bit of the earlier season meta that we saw, but overall, he knows how to handle that Trundle, and BR God definitely knows how to handle this top side because Cub makes another return and they just chunk out the Mundo. Ooh. And at this point, ooh, that's rough. That's. That's really dangerous for Cryon now because that wave is pushing into him. It looks like they're going to push it out anyway, but uh, which I think is a bit of a mistake. They could have effectively just left this wave and based, and Cryon would have been able to do nothing about it. He has no TP, can't get back to the lane. He would have lost a lot of minions, but uh, very lucky for him that they're doing him a, the courtesy of pushing it all the way into the tower and effectively resetting the wave. But still, obviously, very bad that he lost his life again. I mean, on top of that, you, you run a bunch of minions into the turret. That's a lot of fun that he's not getting and a lot of XP he's lacking behind. Already two levels down, 10 CS, and it's only going to get worse from here on out because Tom Kench going to be very happy once those items come in. But the important thing is that three of these kills are on that trundle. So Cub definitely going to look to uh, extend the lead his team has. Uh, looks like he's going to catch Obsidian. Ooh. Well, he saw him and Obsidian jumped away. Yeah, the pillar wasn't quite perfect enough to cancel the jump this time. It was another good attempt, though. But if you look at the gold lead, already almost 2,000. And almost all of that is on Cub. He is currently... Oh, no, sorry. Almost all of that is on BR God. He's currently a uh, good 800 gold ahead of Cryon up here in the top lane. Looking very spicy for this lane. Absolutely. Of course, a little bit of a lead in the mid lane as well. Stingy on that Corky. Of course, you don't have too much kill potential on that Azir, right? You can poke a little bit, but unless you get some jungler ganks, you're not gonna, you're not gonna kill that Corky one v one in the lane if things go right. And in that, well, in that wake, Stingy actually picked up the tier for even more scaling power. As the bot side, Kenny starting to make the first proper aggressions towards Scan. Yeah, a little bit of aggression coming out there, but in good thing to note is that they have now secured this first Ocean Drake. 
And this is something else that Cub uh, has definitely been very good at for as long as I've known him. Getting a couple of early picks, some good early ganks, and then just taking control of the drakes really early on. Um, this is precisely the play style that I expected out of uh, Built by Us, and it's working out for them. Absolutely. At least so far. Yeah, I mean, if you catch that early that early Ocean Drake, the Art God having a good lead, there's no way that Kryon can put on for, uh, proper pressure towards the bot side of the map. And once again, mm -hmm. Carp showing up on the top lane. Kryon, he has his ult, but he is too slow. Obsidian coming in with the ult himself. That Talon has a good chunk of damage, but Cub going fairly low. The Ignite doesn't connect. Trundle ult comes in. He gets the level up. Oh, oh. man. That is unfortunate for a blaze or if you give proper credit absolutely fantastic play from cub yeah brilliant just again and again punishing this mundo he doesn't have flash he can't do anything if you gank him and man it is it's like clockwork uh he's just showing up every every minute every two minutes he'll just be up there and Cryon is really, really feeling the pressure here. Uh, he's just been caught out time and time again. Extremely well played from the side of uh, Built by Us. Yeah, there are they are popping off quite literally, and I'm curious where that's going to go towards the mid game. I mean, I pointed out Stingy a little bit as as the player to watch for me, but obviously it is Cub on that jungle trundle, absolutely wreaking havoc on the top side of a blaze here. And Cryon by now, look at that, gets devoured and oh. gonna get chunked out of lane. Maybe he can get away. Doesn't have the ultimate right now. No ignite, of course, no flash, and there is another. Flick of the tongue completely slobbers Mundo and oh, takes him out. That is not what you want to see if you're if you're Kenny B or Monza in this game. A uh, fed Tom Kench, very hard to deal with. It's obviously gotten to the point now where Cryon is not safe in his lane in the 1v1. And that's really a problem that they have to contain on the side of a blaze. It looks like they're going to try and bring as many members up here as possible. Yep, there's the Empress Divide coming in, also and Slot of Shadows as well. Oh, no, my Talon ult, that was the Hecarim ult I was thinking of. But still, look at that Tom Kench. He is so tanky. He's just going to 2v1 them with like half HP. There's a Thresh HP. Lantern there gets, as well. Yeah, he gets the Thresh Lantern and immediately the sign for a blaze. Yo, that guy has backup. We better get out of here. Oh, Cup. A little bit caught out, and I'll be honest, if Monsi is there on the Azir, he has some farm. You gotta be careful with that bird. You well, do we have, have to respect his ear, yeah. Uh, and it does look like they are going to fully go for a lane stop. Absolutely the smart thing to do. Um, you just can't let Tom Kench keep taking stuff oh, out. The on the end on Ken on the bot side. Nice, condemn back into the turret range. The shots are gonna come in, and Kenny still in range. Doesn't even have the damage oh. to take out Ken, and that is the vein coming in hot with her ultimate. Beautifully done by Ken. Picks up two under the turret. Easy oh. goal. Disaster once more for a blaze. Uh, I was just about to say that, you know, what they needed to do was to get something out of the bot side. The whole time that all these plays were going down top top lane, they were taking plates on that bot tier one, and it was a good play up until the point where they decided to dive Ken. Did not work out for them, and it looks like top lane, the god might be picking up another kill. Although it looks like Cryon's gonna get away with his. Uh, <laughs> his hubris of being on the same part of the map for at the moment but uh yeah. yeah oh that is absolutely not the play you wanted to happen for the bot lane of uh ablaze now they're really on the back foot pretty much everywhere at this point i mean you mentioned it right it's a, it's a good idea you want to make you want to make some plays you want to put some pressure on you want to get that jinx into the game because yeah i i'd almost guess that she's more or less the only saving grace you have left in this matchup at the moment, that Azir might be able to do some stuff, but he's not been able to uh, to get much out of the mid side except for some CS. But still, about almost 30 CS behind here versus that Corky. And Kenny, on the other hand, still decently in the game, has that quiver con uh, completed as well as a Cal almost done. So he's gonna spike some gold in a little bit and maybe can get some items off of that really the only powerhouse still left on the side of a blaze yeah that's the thing and 
you know, that's why they wanted to make this this play on bot lane. If they could get Jinx a kill there, if they could get, you know, the full tower. Oh, the plates, Paco Cox package. Possible. He's going in. He has Monsi in his sights. Goes in hard. Cup in the middle of there. Of course, you don't want to mess around with that fat trumble. First kill goes over to Monsi, though. Ken Frenzo comes in from the back side, trying to clean this one up. Stingy going out and away, trying to get far away from the damage. And now, finally, Kryon comes in with a TP. But can this Mundo do anything? He is 0 and 5, and 0 and 6 shall be his next step in this game doesn't even get a kill as Ken and Stingy with the help of some uh, some vigorous clubbing from the side of Cub they take him out 13 to 1 on this scoreboard right now that's a herald in the mid lane that's going to be a free dragon for BBU and a blaze is in shambles yeah, and the most painful part about that is that that was a 4v5. Uh, BR God did not take part in that at all, and no. it only really gets worse from here for the side oh, of a blaze. Oh. Once he actually goes for the flash dive and he connects the damage, finds oh. the kill, but that's a kill traded back because he doesn't get back out of the turret, especially thanks to the pillar of cup. But still, I'd say that's a worth in all chat here for the Azir. Yeah, that's absolutely worth it. You know, at this point, you're just looking for for anything to get yourself back into the game, get your, you know, your mental back because, without a doubt, for these guys, it's uh, been a disheartening first ten minutes, shall we say? So, absolutely worth in the all chat for that. It looks like there might be a fight down here at the Drake. Yeah, interesting. But... I really expected Cup to just pick that Infernal Drake up after the previous team fight, but they didn't yeah. go for it. And now the single only Infernal Drake that's ever going to spawn this game is in the hands of a Blaze. I mean, quite fitting if you check the names, but still, that is a great pickup. A little bit of a bounce back for them, but still, you're looking at the 7k gold deficit here at 14 and a half minutes. Basically, BBU is getting a kill per minute at the moment. Yeah, and you know that that Drake, it's definitely a mistake on the side of Built by Us. Um, absolutely should have been the ones to secure that, but uh, it's not really going to change the game by itself. But it is again just a little, little ray of oh maybe we do have this uh, for the side of a place. Obviously, as you mentioned, massive gold deficit to overcome at this point. Uh, only 15 minutes in, and it is 7k, as you mentioned, so... Definitely uh, an uphill battle, but not completely impossible. Uh, might get interesting here, because Cobb is sitting in the bush, he's not spotted out, and there we go. Ken pops the ult, tries to connect on Kenny, but that vein gets zoned out nicely by the Flame Chompers. Now, oh, beautiful Ooh. promo! It's both people and the rockets just do too much on damage. Cub, he has the tankiness though. He is just gonna tank that improved Jinx passive attack speed. Since that new oh. patch, it's not gonna save her. And another two picked up by a blaze, but good fighting spirit here from a blaze. Yeah, really well played actually to hold the Braum ultimate for as long as possible until they were until both uh, Ken and Cub were standing on top of each other. It was a very well played level 2v2. Unfortunate that because Cub is uh, currently, I believe, yes, just over 1,500 gold ahead of Obsidian. Um, he had the wallet to survive the resulting attack speed boosts for Kenny, but uh, was definitely very close. And if they get a few more like that, it's going to start to look a little bit less in control for the side of Hilt by us. The thing, the thing really is, right, we're just looking at the microcosm that is the bot lane of the Blaze right now, because Mundo, yeah. top side, still 0-6, Talon 0-3, oh. just one assist as the fight breaks out around Herald. Obsidian actually picking that, that one up, gets away with the ultimate, beautifully done. And really kind of uh, getting away with robbery uh, with uh, daylight theater here basically as they can just completely disengage maybe for the moment actually come spotting and finding obsidian here in the jungle the pillar does connect but not properly enough and now kenny now we can finally see what the jinx can actually do and br god he is just standing there and laughing yeah because that just tickles a little bit oh that's a level 12 tom kench really hard to burn through even with a kraken slayer so Definitely have to wait a couple more minutes 
for a blaze for Kenny to get those items. They're just really playing as safe as they possibly can and hoping for overextension. Oh, the end game from Stingy though. He wants some blood here. Monty dropping lower and lower. Empress Rewrite already used dashes in for the shield. Doesn't quite connect it. Shield bow gonna keep the Corky safe. That's an easy one. We want pick up and through that they can snowball this tier one turret on the bot side and the team as backup here as well. Yeah, I think a bit of a misplay from Monty there. He had a lot of time oh, to disengage. No. Oh. The death sentence connects beautifully done and Cub, look oh, at again. those pillars, man. He has no chill on the disrupts there. Oh. Ken waits with open arms to for Obsidian to jump into his kill count. That's another 300 gold picked up for the vein. And yeah, I mean, oh, I already thought he got away with it. Shambles. Yeah, Obsidian, oh, he thought he got away with it. He thought he got away from the perfect pillars. But oh. there was Ken. <laughs> and just. It's gone a little bit from bad to worse for the top side of a blaze so far this game. Some rays of hope uh, now and then, but at this point, it's extremely difficult to really do anything. You saw, obviously, in bot lane, Monsi basically just got blown up in the 1v1 against Stingy, so. Mm. They don't really have an avenue back in, into the game, and outside of obviously some very big mistakes. So it's just a case of seeing how cleanly uh, Built by Us can close this one out. They are looking for this Mountain Drake here, which is obviously going to be very important. And on the other side, Herald being spawned in mid lane, so a Blaze using what they can to try and get some semblance of control back on this mm. map. They are going to get the tier 1. Yeah, they're finally uh, starting to make some plays, and that's that's a, a, a little bit, at least, of the power of the Jinx that they're finally starting to use, right? She has a kill, she has that Kraken Slayer, but of course, still very much behind overall. Mostly due, yeah. of course, to the fact that there are so many kills on the side of BBU. But they trade one turret back, that's a little bit of the turret. Global Gold traded back as three overall already picked up for BBU. But still... I love, I love how well Cub managed to snowball this whole Ooh. game as Asko looks for an engage in the bot side. There is Monsi getting dove oh. by both Cub and BR God and oh, that's the bird spit into the wrong direction. Monsi is going to get away with the flash but still look how oppressive these two are. Cub absolutely phenomenal so far. Yeah, really just impossible to deal with at this point and Oh, is he going to get caught? No, nope. not quite. Just gets away with the shuffle, but yeah, they lose a mid tier too because uh, they had to send Asko down there to try and cover him, cover him. Which, not sure how much he could have done to be honest, if the uh, God and Cub managed to catch up to Monsi. But looks like they might try and go for a pick. Nope, just disengaged with the pillar. So yeah, as you were saying. Brilliant play so far from Cub. Excellent pillars all around. And uh, this is why Trundle is so scary. Yeah, I, I love that Trundle jungle is coming back, right? Because the pillar the pillar works so well in this current meta. There's a lot of dashes, gap closes, and what do you know? Um, and top of that, misfortune being in the meta, you can cancel a bullet time on a pillar. So having a Trundle jungle main and Cub very much is one of the rare people that actually main this champion in the jungle uh, is absolutely beneficial. And by now, he, he did his job. He snowballed the early game massively for his team. So Stingy by now also online that Corky doing massive damage. And even though Ken Friends, Fresno on the vein, he got a little bit behind in the lane which is to be expected in the Vayne versus Jinx ma uh, matchup still very much still uh, at a power level that he can actually fight people yeah he's just completed the wit's end here he's gonna be really hard for for Muncie to kill at least so and the shield bow obviously is gonna give him a lot of extra protection against obsidian and Kenny so it's getting even harder as time goes on to shut down the carries on the side of yep. uh, built by us, and Quick it looks question. like they're going for a Nash. 
Yeah, Cub already tanking that way in advance. He already had to smite. That thing is still on cooldown. Baron dropping low. There is no oh, one in the oh. available area to steal that one. Beautiful dive into the backline by VR God as well. He swallows down the Jinx. Can he? Gonna get taken out in the backside. Obsidian fighting the 1v1 with Stingy. Cryon going in the front line. Mundo trying to do his job, but it is all over. A blaze completely lit up and turned to ashes. This was a devastating team fight for them and with that i'm pretty sure that bbu will just roll over the base now yeah 22 minutes in they have the nash they have a 11,000 gold lead it's i mean it was tough to come back before it's pretty much impossible to come back now I, you know i'm this might be my first cast to curse but i'll i'll go for it i don't think <laughs> that a blaze are gonna win this game <laughs> Okay, okay. Well, if that Bold curse actually holds true, I'll, I'll, I'll draw my hand in front of you. That would be absolutely impressive, but no. You very yeah. much have a point here. They are so far behind. Four kills only on the board. Two to seven turrets. And as you mentioned, 11, almost 12k gold behind. That's nothing. You can just come back from now. Maybe you can find a miracle teamfight with a Jinx, maybe, but still yeah that is highly unlikely with tom kench that is so giga fed a trundle and of course quirky vein just just demolish everyone really just yeah kind of kind of just a game where you now have to sit back hold on a little bit longer and discuss what you need to change going into the next game um if you're if you think if you think out of the position of a blaze what do you go for here do you actually target the trundle in the jungle or is there another problem you have to tackle first? I think the biggest thing for them is that they haven't quite picked for their playstyle. And you and I were obviously looking at the OP oh. GGs for these players earlier. Oh, there's another fight going down. Oh, actually a thresh. It's very, very deep. Wolf goes far behind enemy lines into the inhibitor turret with the Shirima shuffle in there as well. But luckily. Tom Kench still has the Devour. Stingy has a package, so sieging should be very possible here. BR God going deep, looking for the kill. Stingy going to the back line, trying to kick out Kenny S, and immediately the Jinx is gone. No miracle turnarounds for these guys, and the Blaze are lit up and completely fired. Well, it's a triple kill for Ken Fresno. It's gonna be the base, and maybe the ace when they catch out Obsidian, but overall, what a dominance shown here by bbu and with that well they're on match point now in this best of three yeah that is that is the demon game one that you absolutely don't want to face against uh for <laughs> i feel a little bit bad for a blaze um can't imagine any of them were, were loading into this game expecting that but back to the drawing board for them and hopefully they can come back stronger in this second game Absolutely. Back to the drawing board. Indeed, we gotta figure out what we can do here on the side of a blaze. But hey, they've played them before. The last best of five ended actually with a blaze winning three to two. So there is some potential here. This is not through yet. And we're gonna have another absolutely hot matchup for you guys. But before we uh, before we talk through this whole thing and the next draft, I think Foxy will take a little break, take a little breather, and then we'll Ooh. be right back with the next matchup and hopefully a series if a blaze can even this one out. So don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be right back for you.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are in the middle of this series between a blaze and built by us Academy. Built by us, we're leading with a devastating 1 2 0 elite. What a first game that just was. And we're about to jump into the second round as the side swap is going to come in. A blaze looking for the blue side this time around. And. Uh... Uh... No, sorry, well they're staying on red side. Never mind me on that one. But Foxy, Ablaze, they need to change some things up because Cub absolutely demolished them last game. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I think the problem for Ablaze is that they saw Cub's aggression on the top side and the way that they countered it was to, to fight him. On, on the top side. Uh, Obsidian and Cryon, I believe, tried twice to, to pull off a 2v2 up there. And they also brought Monsi up as well on Azir to try and balance it out with a with another sort of 3v2 situation. And that didn't work out. So I think the trouble for them was that they had the wrong champions to actually do that. Um, if they want to fight, you know, Cub when he's on this top lane, they don't just need the Talon. They need to have something aggressive, like a Camille, like a Gwen, or, or even a Gangplank or something um, for the top lane that can just join in on the 2v2, because even by the time the first 2v2 happened, uh, Mundo was already behind, and you know we, we pointed out several times how not having Flash was a huge weakness for him. Hmm. So they definitely need to switch something up around that top side if they want to keep taking the fights up there. The opposite thing that they could do is to double down on the, the picks that they had and just play a little bit safer. Um, they obviously didn't have to take a few of those 2v2s and 3v2s that they attempted. So perhaps that will be the change up that they end up making but it's definitely one of those two and it's definitely needed because they cannot just run back into cub if especially if he gets trundle again yep especially if cub gets trundle again so maybe some uh, maybe one of those picks you'd actually look towards in terms of banning it away from bbu if you are a blaze or possibly yes but uh, i think Cub has shown, you know, if you, if you look at his champion pool over the last two and a half years almost, um, there's a consistent six or seven champions that can absolutely just do everything Trundle was doing in that game. Um, so you can't really ban him out and that just solves everything. They definitely need to change something on their own playstyle and... You know, on the bot side for a blaze, I would actually like to see, well, I I would actually like to see Obsidian go towards the bot side for a blaze because they were very strong in the early part of that game. They were taking plates and punishing the fact that uh, built by us were focusing so heavily on the top side, but they didn't quite get the jungle attention or the mid lane attention that they needed to actually snowball their lead and. Obviously, they made one mistake trying to dive uh, Ken friends uh, Ken. Fresno, that's a tongue twister, uh, on the vein, and it kind of meant they, they weren't able to actually snowball properly on that bot side and didn't stand a chance against Fed Tom Kench. As we get into the draft here, MF is coming out as another, I believe it's the same first ban from the last game. Yeah, so far so good. Olaf, of course, taken out of the way as well. You don't want to give that over to Cub either. Still the question if the trundle is going to show up as we see the Leona taken away from the bot side of uh, Ablaze. And from here on out... Oh, actually, there is the trundle ban. Ooh. There is the trundle ban. So that is going to be a little bit of a change up coming in for BBU here. They are going to try it. Okay. Well, that's interesting for sure. I would like to see them also change up either their picks or the, or the place that they were doing. In this early game, like I said, I don't think banning Trundle is just the be-all end-all solve or solution to all of the problems that they had on top side in that first game. Maybe 
banning Tom Kench is the other solution because oh. that was also a problem. And that Victor was also immediately a picked up for Stingy in the mid lane, so back to comfort. Yeah, Victor definitely a comfort pick for Stingy, but not traditionally a first pick champion. Mm. So I'd be interested to see what a Blaze is going to pick up against it. Vex is obviously a relatively high priority champion in the meta at the moment, and she's still open, although Twisted Fate is going to be the pickup. So that's a little bit okay. more of what we expected before the first game, and Viego as well. There we go, the Viego pick for the jungle so, for Obsidian. So once again, a fairly aggressive, uh, a fairly aggressive jungler. I mean, I'm still, I'm still a little bit up in the air if I'm uh, gonna call Viego a really good aggressive early game jungler or just no. overall a really uh, decent fighter, especially towards the mid game uh, once he has his old rolling. But of course, an interesting pickup that might lead to some decent ganks. But on the other side, Cub. Going a little bit out of his usual champion pool, it picks up the Xin Zhao for the jungle. Yep, but it's, you know, it's yet again another champion that's uh, extremely good at sort of level two, level three, and is also very, very good in these mid game and early game skirmishes. Um, you know, the, the W from Xin Zhao, the way it was changed up so that he can dash to the target that he hits from a very long range away will probably have a similar effect to the Trundle Pillar uh, from the first game, if they're still playing, you know, the same very heavy uh, topside playstyle. So still a dangerous pick, still definitely a player to keep your eyes on in this second game, as Senna is the response. And that is pretty interesting, because I didn't see that at all in any of these champion pools. Senna is a, a little bit of a odd pick here coming in. Definitely, uh, definitely not on my radar, I'll be honest with you. But still, can be a very, very interesting scaling options for the bot lane, especially if we see another vein come in. You have so much range later on that you can just you can just bully someone out with that Senna pick. But of course, once again, that Thresh picked up for Wolf, so you gotta ban out the Aphelios in the second rotation. Camille taken away from a Cryon, because it seems like BBU really does not want an aggressive top laner in the hands of Cryon here for the moment. Yeah, absolutely. They just want to keep Cryon stuck on the Mundo, on these tank picks, and just make sure that he's contained. Obviously, BR God had a pretty easy time of it up in top lane last time with all the attention that cub gave him and maybe they're trying to focus more on the bot side for this game and they're just going to make sure that uh BR God has a, a matchup that he can just sort of mental diff his way into at least staying neutral in uh, i can't imagine cryon is feeling super confident if they end up with a tank versus tank matchup although it looks like they're going to give him the counter pick as nautilus is picked up yeah. yeah, support pickup. Gotta so, leave that top side open, and with a TF in the mix, I'm I'm expecting them to try and at least gun towards something aggressive. And BBU seems yeah. to be thinking the same thing because they have banned out Gwen on top of that. So ban uh, Gwen and Camille, two of the more aggressive and really well into scaling into the late game champions, taken away. Draven picked up for the bot side. Good aggression and last but not least, what is it gonna be for the top side here for BBU? It's gonna be interesting to see, but uh, one thing to note is that the Nautilus pickup obviously confirmed Senna as the AD carry for the side of a blaze, and you know it just opens up this Draven pick so much because Senna, traditionally not a champion with a lot of health in the early game or a lot of fighting power in level one, level two, so. Yeah, Draven, spicy pickup for this bot lane, and it looks like Mundo is going to be the blind pick for BR God. So, a safe pick. I want to see what Cryon brings out. Shen Ooh, is going to be the answer. Okay. That's an interesting lineup. I'm not going to lie to you, but that is very much different from what we were expecting come uh, to come out from a blaze in general right we were expecting a little yeah. bit more focus towards the this uh, the solo lanes the mid the top with obsidian trying to snowball these lanes but this time around it seems to be really more on the defensive side lots of global ults and 
kind of catering towards their bot side a little bit and maybe kind of gun towards winning team fights with a Viego reset with a Senna Senna range advantage and on the other side well Draven the early game bully ever uh, ever uh, on the side of BBU Victor solid control mage mid lane pick just scales well into the late game and Cub Omnix and Zhao looking to take some names again in the early game yeah and for a blaze it's you know it's the second of the two change-ups that we were talking about, right? It looks like they've chosen to sort of double down on the the playing safe. Uh, Shen, obviously a champion that can just completely negate all of Xin Zhao's damage uh, once he's dashed in with his uh, with the Shen W there. So definitely a champion that can stay much safer under the tower than the Mundo can, and obviously. If he goes again without a flash, he at least has the Shen Taunt to dash away from uh, obstacles. And well, well, there's no pillars in this game, but you know maybe there'll be a champion in the way this time instead. Um, yeah, absolutely. Some so at least at yeah. least some more safety than the Mundo was able to yes. provide. But I'm really curious how BR God is measure going to measure up against him with that, especially Mundo with the cleavers, able to lay down some poke on Shen. So I'm really curious how this one is going to play out. Something we've seen uh, quite uh, quite some time ago, sorry, uh, again and again from Shens actually is to run an ignite instead of the teleport, and that might come in handy against the Mundo. It might come in handy, yes, but I think the focus for this game might actually just be completely on bot lane. Obviously, mm -hmm. Draven is a champion that demands attention. Um, you know, not just from the audience, but. Uh, his jungler as well. So I would not be surprised with Mundo being such a safe pick to just leave alone in top lane. Uh, I would not be surprised that if we see Cub bringing this Xin Zhao down to the bot lane and taking a much more active role in the 2v2 down there, mm. uh, maybe making it a, a bit of a 3v2. And I think for a Blaze, this Twisted Fate pick is actually going to be crucial because last game, they tried to move Monsi around on the Azir. They tried to have him save the side lanes as much as he could. And, you know, Azir was not a champion that is capable of doing that. Whereas Twisted Fate, a little bit more earlier game orientated and the teleport for Twisted Fate with, with the uh, Destiny Gate is much faster than Azir's movement speed. So... It'll be a little bit quicker and a little bit more decisive, I'm hoping, for the side of Ablaze, if they try and catch out uh, the side lanes of Built by Us. Yeah, absolutely. And you have the Victor measuring up against that. Victor, as I mentioned, more of the control mage type, so we'll see if Stingy can put on enough pressure to kind of force Monsi to either make trades when he leaves lane to gain something or just force him to stay in lane because they'd otherwise lose the turret so once again i mentioned it uh, last champion select already stingy a player i'm gonna keep my eyes on but after that first game i definitely gotta say it's gonna it's gonna rise and fall with cub in the jungle he put down the law in game one in the top side and this time yeah. around the Xin Zhao, i'm really curious if as you mentioned the bot lane is going to be his main focus. We'll get to that in a second. But of course, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget, predictions are up at the moment. Vote for who you think is going to pull this one out. One point lead currently. And with that match point for BBU and Ablaze, they need to even this one out to take this series to game three. And of course, for both teams, this is about seeding in the playoffs. BBU more or less already confirmed first place, but they want to finish the season without a single loss. So this would be the win to make it happen. And on the other side, of course, the Blaze, they want to secure that second spot overall. So not there is no better matchup that we could have hoped for for the last round of the group stage here for Division 2. And I'm super excited to see where this one is going. As we're loading into the rift slowly but surely. Foxy, once again, predictions. What's up, man? Oh, see, this is a tough one because I, I, I think, you know, my heart was on the side of a Blaze last game, and uh, it took a beating. <laughs> so 
I mean, to be fair, that's what your heart does, right? It beats. Yeah, true. That's that's true. I forgot about that one. But uh, no, I think absolutely the smart money is on built by us to close this one out. Cub had an absolutely stellar performance in game one, and I'd like to see him repeat it here. Absolutely, I'm on board with you, but to repeat it, we're gonna sync up, and uh, I think once we are all ready, we're gonna get this one going. All right, it is once again a blaze versus BB Hugh. A blaze in fiery red, as all things should be. And with that, we're loading onto the rift. Let's go, let's see what they can do today. Ooh. Trust our fingers for them. Is that an all of a blaze grouped up in mid at the moment? This could be an interesting level one. Was that gonna be a straight up? Hook down the mid lane, grab Stingy and force his flash. Oh. <laughs> Unfortunate, but good try. Yeah, I mean, it was ballsy. They needed something like that to happen, but uh, just for morale purposes, if nothing else. But didn't don't quite get everything. And in that meantime, the cub managed to sneak a ward into the red buff. And I don't believe he was seen by the side of a blaze, so they might not know that that's warded. So a little bit of extra information there for the side of uh, uh, built by us, always a good thing. But then Absolutely. And looking at items here, seems to be pretty much all standard. The Draven taking a long sword and three pots. Um, I believe that is the standard correct build now, because you snowball much much faster into your first item yep. so ooh. oh there's the first death sentence we immediately got some action some axes flying around and of course the first adoration stacks ooh. for 10 and that's also something we'll have to wait and see with draven because he wants to cash in on those stacks yeah absolutely um up to nine stacks already so going good so far but uh absolutely not what you wanted if you are asco down there losing you know, half your health in the first 10 seconds of the lane before the minions have even arrived, so... Yeah, I mean, of course, you, you kind of want to stabilize the lane, right? But you have to back off because you're losing lane treasure, and that's going to make the game for uh, for BBU that much easier. Of course, yeah. junglers, they're just going to path downwards, and currently Obsidian a lot faster, so maybe he can actually pick up the scuttle before Cub gets there. Possibly, yes, but uh, I believe... The blue side of the jungle in general is slightly slower if you're uh, not taking Krugs on the on that red side. So I'm expecting the pace to just about even out as he takes the Gromp and the blue buff down here. Cub going straight for the red buff, skipping the Raptor camp first. He might go back to that, but it looks like he's looking to be ready for any bot lane skirmishes that pop out. As top lane, there's some trading going down. Yep, the Argod once again with the early damage. You can see that Mundo definitely winning out of that trade. No Ignite this time on Cryon as well, so he's going to be fairly happy with that one. But there's yeah, a ward going to out from Jungle from Monsi. And I'm pretty sure that Obsidian is going to pick up the Scuttle here. Sin just going to keep farming. Hopefully, might look for a fight. He's gonna they might look for something spicy here. It looks like they're trying to step up and sort of zone Kenny away from these waves. And Wolf is going to be able to move out of lane. But... Next to charge, wind turns lightning, and he is in the mid lane. Knock up lands. Death Ray oh. comes in. Both card a bit too late. Monsi still has to flash. Now Obsidian and Asko both join oh, the counter. Up wants the first blood. He oh. goes in and gets it, flashes out, just wants oh. to get away from the whole situation, and does so. So. Another kill picked up here for the side of BBU. Uh, you you just can't much. stop this guy, can you? I mean, they had the numbers advantage. They brought three people into mid lane to try and stop Cub getting an early kill, and he just flashes the Nautilus hook at the same time as killing Monsi. So, oof. It's, a, it's another painful beginning to the game for yep, the side of a place. There's more aggressiveness oh, coming up, but with the, that death sentence would have landed, but it would have been interesting. But this time uh, around, it's my client yeah. that's bugging out, so uh, I can I can definitely feel you here. Yeah, I believe uh, 
here's some foxy tech support for you. I believe if you just click on the timeline, your current second in the game, uh, it sort of resets it a bit. But okay. uh, the client's strange. It works in weird ways. Ooh. That's for sure. There's an interesting t tip for you guys. So click the timeline to fix all your client issues, and yep. that actually did. Okay, BR got gonna keep farming. He's gonna be very Ooh. happy to just pick up free CS on the top side as Wolf connects another death sentence. The hook lands on Asko, and of course that Nautilus is gonna get chunked out. BR God has some good damage on the top as well. Cryon definitely has to be a little bit careful here, but of course there's a bunch of minions that you have to watch if you are the Mundo. Another death sentence. Hoax a minion, otherwise that would have been trouble for the Nautilus. Yeah, absolutely they're struggling here in this bot lane as it looks like there's a gank mid lane. Cub, maybe gonna get oh, another one? Oh. oh my god, the damage is actually enough. I was, I was so sure that Monsi would have gotten away there, but there you go. That's the Cub Factor coming in in the early game, already picking up two kills for the mid lane here. And that's gonna get the victor into the game very, very nicely. Yeah, just really nice for them in mid lane here shutting down twisted fate before he can even reach level six hugely important for the side of built by us just stops him from being able to influence the these side lanes at all as you have obviously seen there's been some pretty close fights both for bot lane and top lane no kills coming out yet from either lane but obviously if a twisted fate were to get involved perhaps that would change and shutting him down this early on is uh Definitely nothing but good news for the side of uh, Built by Us. Yeah, and I, me I mentioned it already. It's all coming back to Cub and what he does in the early game, and he does it fantastically. So, picks up two kills in the mid lane, shuts down the TF, and from here on out, I'm really, really curious how BBU can snowball this one further. Next. Next address for me, quite honestly, would be first Drake, the Draven in the bot lane, cash in on those stacks, get Ken rolling, because quite honestly, BR God on that Mundo, you don't really want to snowball a Mundo, that's not really worth your time. No, it's really just uh, a case of leaving top lane as an island, you know, maybe, maybe Monsi would travel up with the Destiny Gate to try and pick up a kill for himself, but I think generally that top lane is uh, something that both junglers are going to want to be staying as far away from as possible. As it looks like there might be a setup down here in bot lane, as Obsidian is just going to jump over the wall into the river and maybe start the dragon. Yeah, I'm but just hanging around. Maybe you definitely being aware that something might happen. They're not pushing in, uh, only starting to now and. Maybe Obsidian can still get something going here. We have the Shen ult as well, so that's a factor you have to uh, watch out for if this fight actually breaks out. Yeah, I think that's there. maybe what they're afraid of. And it looks like Obsidian is going to start up the Drake, so not too scared that covers potentially in the area. Maybe they got some vision on him. I'm not entirely sure, but uh, yeah, there's, there's the first Drake going down and that's actually what you wanted to see for the side of Iblis. It's a much better start than before. Eight minutes in and it's only a 1,000 gold difference. So yeah. not insurmountable at this point. It's the gang coming in towards the mid lane. Oh. They did box in on the Herald, but Monsi walks straight into the Victor damage, dies to the Chaos Storm. And Obsidian, he can do nothing but back off here. The Vanguard's Edge, sorry, the old from Sin comes in as well. That's gonna be an easy pickup. Asko try to support his team, only gets by out by the skin of his teeth. And the Flash invested overall. Yeah. Another catastrophic endeavor here for a blaze. Yeah, Crescent Guard. That's the Zinza ultimate. And yeah, it's very easy to to get confused with all of them. Um, but a bit unfortunate for Kenny B in particular there. Losing Senna ultimate. Obviously, very unfortunate for Obsidian and Monsi losing their lives. But uh, yeah. Losing that Senna R is that's an, one of the three globals that a Blaze have available, and it just makes them that much weaker in all the potential fights around this top side. As it looks like they might be looking for a dive. No, nope. they've spotted Obsidian. They're going to back away. 
Uh, Cup was looking for some action, but of course you gotta respect oh. the Diego Red. Already completed that sentence, gonna land on the bot side. The axes fly in. Can looking to cash in on the Adoration stacks. That's some juicy, juicy gold for the Draven. Let's check out how much that. I believe he had something like 160 stacks just before that. So uh, that's, that's a that's decent chunk of gold. Load. 393 gold cashed in right now for Cam. Ooh. He's gonna go back with that one. 82 CS, 20 CS ahead, a kill in the backs on top of that. Man, that's an instant essence reaver. That's a happy Draven. That's a very happy Draven. It's a very happy built by us team as well at the moment because, you know, Cubs ahead again, uh, Stingy is ahead again, and Ken is ahead again. So it's. They're losing options very fast uh, for the side of a blaze, and it's really a matter of what are they going to put all of their eggs into. I'm expecting in the next couple of minutes that we should see a sort of Hail Mary aggressive play, perhaps onto Ken if he's overextending like here. Oh, he's going to back up before he gets caught, but... They need to sort of throw all their eggs in one basket and try and get a play to work for them because it's been all on Cub. It's been all for the side of built by us so far in this game. And they've got to yep. get their own little bit of control. What's worrying me the most, honestly, is that Monty on that Twisted Fade in the mid lane, he's level 8. He hasn't altered a single time. He has not gotten a single gank off, and that is not what you want to do on a TF. So you can definitely see how much pressure Stingy is putting on in the mid lane, of course, with the help from Cub. But overall, a Blaze, they, they have really very few options left. BBU Ooh. doesn't give them any room to breathe, but maybe now Wolf caught oh, out. Destiny card. comes in. Uh, the dredge line is not connecting and still cup just alting for safety but enemy isn't following up so you're fine here for the moment yeah that was uh, a little bit unfortunate i think monsi was a little bit slow with his teleport oh Ooh. he's all in by himself on the way to the mid lane flashes out of the chaos storm barely gets away here dingy once again at the right time at the right place oh, yeah that's Stingy. twice now that stingy's been catching Monsi out in this game from rotations, although it looks like he's might finally oh, pay for flash, it. Um, flashes the dredge line though, that's the TP coming in from BR God, that might help. Deathray goes in on Monsi, Stingy going for the kill here on Monsi, doesn't quite connect, but Cobb is in there with him. BR God on the moon, looks in going deep under the turret, but it's gonna get shot down, that's a big gold cash in here for Cryon King, two kills oh, for the and Raven old, it's the whirling. Oh doesn't connect unfortunate but good try here by ken very close and that is perfect that's exactly what you wanted for a blaze it looks like they're gonna make another play in bot lane speak about hail mary plays they are going in obsidian looking for the stun gets death sentence though but you watch out Teleport with ken that guy has damage like crazy access doesn't catch them because of the cc but stingy has the tp oh. gold card follow up by monsi who showed up on the bot side as well and once again the five man gang squad is gonna secure another kill for a blaze putting four back on the board and suddenly they're back in the game and looking at a second drake yeah, this is absolutely the set of plays that I was expecting to come out, and it's exactly what they needed for the side of a blaze. Just catching people out with numbers advantage and getting the kills before the TPs can come through. It's it's so important for them to, to pick up these kills, and they're doing a really good job of executing on these plays. It looks like they're going to maybe catch out Cub again here. Yep, Destiny is used. They definitely see the Xin in the jungle there, but he has so much damage. Watch that Crescent Ooh. Guard. He has so much pressure on Monsi, and the TF barely gets away. But at least BR God should be aware that they are coming now and should be getting away from that turret. In the bot side, maybe you're gonna trade more turret plates, and overall, still really, really good picks coming in for a blaze. That's absolutely what they needed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm not quite sure uh, how far off, oh no, sorry, I believe Obsidian has got enough gold now to base and buy first item and boots, so he's sitting very pretty at the moment, I'm expecting him to reset very soon. Um, first item's just sort of coming in across the board now for both teams. It looks like 
Kenny is going to be going for the attack speed center build, so Kraken Slayer expecting a Rage Blade second or perhaps a Lord Dominic's regards. Um, but yeah, overall, I would say that Ablaze has balanced out the game the way that they needed to. The gold difference is still there, it's about 4,000 at the moment, but it's nowhere near as insurmountable as it was last game, and it steps in the right direction for them. Yeah, and once again, as I mentioned, it's kind of off the back of Cub, and even with uh, with those picks coming in, he always was in the middle of the place trying to defend Stingy, but overall, I'd say the carry hopes lie on the back of Can Fresno with that Draven. 122 CS, almost the second item completed. He is looking absolutely devastating for the enemy team right now. And I'm really, um, really curious to see that Victor, uh, sorry, that Draven pop off. Well, that Victor as well. Look at his gold. Jesus. Yeah, about 1.6k ahead for the side of Ken over Kenny. So, sitting pretty there on the Draven. And it's a similar story for Stingy, Stingy versus Monzi. So, Mid, mid bot working out as there's another Let's fight. Let's go with the flash over the wall, but there is Ken in the backside. They don't have the gold card. It's Ooh, a Reggie pick for Monsi. Taunt comes in, but they're gonna push the Shen away. Senna old from downtown, not gonna save his life. That's an easy pickup. They're transitioning fast into a Herald, and suddenly everything that Ablaze won back is going to the river again. Yeah. There was some rays of hope, bigger rays of hope this time, but it looks like Built by Us are going to take control of this game yet again. This Herald tier is probably going to be used to secure one of those side lane tier 2 towers and inject a whole bunch of cash into uh, one of their carries, although before then we might get another little fight in the bot jungle. No. Yep, looks like they're gonna some people, away. but he has his sights set on the red buff, so he's not going to be too fussed about following up. Lane swap's yeah. coming in as well. You're gonna sit stingy down to the bot lane as well, so his bit his bot lane can farm in the middle. You just wanna give all the resources you have at the moment to the Draven. You wanna get him ahead even more so he can just completely annihilate the enemy. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, it's I know it's not it's nowhere near over, but it almost feels like there's a little bit of desperation coming out from the side of a place. They know that they're one game down already and uh it looks like they're just trying everything they can to try and make plays, which is good, because it means that they're not, you know, surrendering, which is a very nice, uh, or a very good thing to avoid doing in uh, these games. So, definitely signs of life from them, but it looks like the side of uh, Built by Us are just playing this much, much better. And as you said, Draven almost on the second item now. He's going to be pretty much unkillable as it looks like he's look, uh, looking for a shield bow. And it's very awkward for the side of a blaze to actually buy any anti heal outside of, you know, Shen with that Bramble Vest there. Uh, maybe some on the Diego, but overall, you definitely have a point. Monzi working on that rapid fire cannon. Very important for him to pick that up to get the extra range on his gold card engages, but overall. Oh. Definitely a rough spot here for a blaze. The Shenol is gonna catch a single Draven Axe, and oh, that last second Shen Field gonna cancel the auto attack. The Argot trying to turn this one around, but it's an easy first kill on Cub. There was so much damage going on. The Xin didn't even know what hit him. They are turning this one around. No, as they're getting Stingy the resets. Arrives. They're getting the resets on the Diego, but still, they are very oh, no. low and still very much in. Good spirits here, flashes in, gets the kill on Kenny. It's gonna be Monsi picked up. It's gonna be the triple kill for Stingy. And with that, man, let's just call it an easy mid lane tier two, maybe even the inhibitor turret. Yeah, that was a, such a close fight. Just a couple things one way or another would have changed the whole thing. All started with Kenny being caught out by BR God, just walking behind him through, uh, I believe it was the the raptor bush. He just walked behind him into mid lane and just so close to getting taken out immediately. But obviously, as you said, very well timed uh, Shenar to save Kenny at the last second there. And an extremely close fight played out afterwards. I think if Obsidian had managed to connect 
just I believe he he just missed out on connecting t to uh, to Ken with one of his resets uh, with the I believe it's Heartbreaker, the Diego R. And uh, if he had gotten that, that fight could have gone completely the other way. But Ken did a very good job of staying alive in the back back line and was just eventually able to burn through Obsidian and the uh, uh, Cryon. That's kind of the issue, right, with the with the Draven with the Draven comp, and of course Victor arriving a little bit late to the fight. You can see how hard can 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 engage on someone. Jesus, that's not a good yeah. words I should use. And as you mentioned, that Herald gonna be popped in the mid lane, trying to figure something out. Death charge goes in, fall can't follow up, and Ooh. there's so much damage on the Draven this time around. But Cub, he has the old in there as his AD carry drops. They might be able to turn this one around because the victor is in the fight. Down goes Kenny. That's the third kill overall. They are wreaking havoc on the mid lane. It does not look good for a blaze. They are set on fire. It's a double kill for BR God. The ace picked up for BBU and the inhibitor surely will follow. They might even go for the end here. They might have time for this. I mean, it doesn't matter if you kill the Draven when there's an eight and one victor sat right next to him able to dish out the damage. Oh. They are not was... going for the end, but still, as you mentioned, you catch that Draven out finally, you roll over him with your initial burst and then you're out of yeah. steam. You don't have anything left, and then the real boss starts walking down the river, the rift. And what are you gonna do? What are you? Yeah. Gonna do? And that's the thing with Draven. You know, you keep all eyes on him so much that you just miss the the little guy with the laser cannon. It's gonna walk around and uh, ray your face off. <laughs> yep. Maybe we should rename him to Face Meltor or something. <laughs> yeah. Maybe people will, will pay a bit more attention to him when he's fed that way, yeah. Who knows? Uh, Who knows? Maybe that's the thing. But as you already mentioned, um it's kinda it's kinda important that you catch these carries out, right? That you get the uh, that you get the drop of them, the big damage while uh, catching out the nautilus definitely is gonna be good Oof. for Genji. Jesus. <laughs> God like nine and one. That's the oh. stingy carry that I was expecting from the first game on the Corky, but now he shows up a little bit later. Yeah, well, point. they've got they've got him a pick that uh, can actually sort of play this early game. Corky, obviously not a champion, traditionally known for his level one two yeah. uh, antics, but you know, really well played so far this game from Stingy. He had an exceptional uh, stun on uh, Obsidian and Monsi in mid lane, or Obsidian and Azco in mid lane after the first flood that completely stopped them from trading back any kills. So it looks like they're gonna go for Baron here, actually. Yep. Another 22 minutes, Baron. Things are in the pit. Slowly but surely, Ablaze is gonna notice that this is going on, but Obsidian, he is trying to get it close and in there. Baron down to 1k, picked up by BBU. Where is the fight? They are not choosing to uh, engage, so They'll just Ooh. back off, spend some of that hard gurned gold, and from there on out, well, I'll be very honest with you, it doesn't look good for a Blaze's base. No, it doesn't. And uh, we're in a similar-ish similar situation to last game. 10k gold the difference this time, so, you know, one more one more thousand in the pocket of a Blaze. They, they haven't fallen behind this time, but uh, still an extremely tough situation to come back from. They do have the tools for it, though, you know, if... Uh, Asco is not getting blown up before a fight begins, then uh, he may well be looking for... Or he may well be able to get a depth charge onto the Draven or onto the Victor, and they can maybe shut, him, shut that person down, whichever one he picks. So still opportunities to come back in this game, but yeah, very tough. It's gonna be hard, and especially if you don't get any vision in your own jungle. You can see Wolf is just sweeping through and clearing everything. Already sweeped uh, 49 wards this whole game. That's quite a lot that he got to pick up there on that thrash. Tier 2 bot side gonna drop. That's just uh, leaving the last tier 2 on the bot in the top. 
Destiny tra traded out. He's actually going in. They Ooh. want to engage on this one. Gold card connects on the support. Immediately going gold in the Gizonias. And Kryon trying to side flank this one on the Shen. Barely saves his 3F with the old. But the fight still underway. Can he get some good damage in? But this forest out immediately. VR God pops the ultimate and maximum dosage of pain. Rolling in right here as the Mundo picks up the first. Oh, God, come. Oh, am not going home today. He's going to pick up the first. Just waiting for Kryon's feet to end and that's the second for ken four for nothing it just like that the base is gonna fall and Ooh. like that bbu going to look to finish out a perfect 6-0 group stage here in the valence league division 2 beautifully done what a great matchup this was tonight wow wow man you just can't stop cub he just just jumps in and you die. <laughs> yep. Excellent series. Uh, really well played all round from the side of uh, Built by Us Academy. Just, yeah, solid play all around. Everyone did what they needed to do. And there was a couple of times where it looked like they were maybe getting caught out, but they were always able to turn it around. You know, outside of, I believe, one or two fights very early on in this game, it was always always built by us uh coming out on top in both games this series so really well played by them dominant performance absolutely also d uh, also the gg of course towards a blaze they tried to pull it back they got some good plays off in the second game they definitely yeah. found some adaptions that worked for them Banning out the Trundle and the Tom Kench definitely did them some good. Cryon on the Shen, a much, much better game than the first one. And Obsidian on the Viego looked a lot more comfortable picking up uh, some good kills there in the resets and the mid-game fights. But overall, sadly, it wasn't enough. And I think that is mainly due to one man on the side of BBU. And that was Cub. Pointed it out the first game that Trundle was absolutely devastating multiple times catching out obsidian with the pillars on the talon but and overall of course just snowballing br god into the game and the second round around as well stingy he got so far ahead in the early game thanks to Carl. yeah absolutely fully done yeah it was a just a really solid snowball from from stingy in this mid lane here they shut down monzi on the twisted fate it was a completely different play style to that first game where they were focusing the top lane a lot more but still just as potent absolutely and now that we're talking about him we have the man himself here with us today we'll get cub in for a quick interview good evening sir congrats on the clean sweep two and oh and of course six win in a row what a group stage you guys had yeah good evening what a game hope the viewers enjoyed the one-sided beatdown <laughs> That's a way to phrase it. I mean, uh, some, I, I all respect to Blaze. They, I think they're a good team. They look good on paper. Whenever mm. I've had a little view of them, you know, from time to time, I haven't really studied them. But I think they look like a good team, and we just had our way with them. So makes us even better. I would like to say, without even questions, I started the team as a sub because I was a bit busy elsewhere. Blah blah blah. Uh, Ken joined as a sub, so what I would say is this roster, the five that just played, we have not lost a single match, not series, we haven't even lost one map. So looking forward to playoffs, looking forward to facing the teams on the other side of Division 2, Team Chonk, IRL, Esports Wales, Hentai Haven, come at us, we are undefeated, let's go. <laughs> best, best jungler division 2 ban the trundle if you want don't ban him we'll pick it ban the Olaf every game everyone is banning it every scrim every game <laughs> Olaf is banned now they're banning the trundle tell you what ban the trundle Tam will be open Victor will be open yeah too many bans too OP this team love it love my team shout out to Akbar great coach no <laughs> questions go. even needed yeah. I was about to say you're you're kind of you're kind of taking all the words out of my mouth. Yeah. I just want absolute... to say as well. I wish I wish we had the cameras on in the Twitch stream because I have been doing shots 
from about half six. I've been loving tonight. The atmosphere within my team is amazing. I've just been doing shots in between. Ekbar's asked me to calm it down a little. But you know what? When it gets to game five, we are going to freeze zero, everyone. Because if there's a game four or game five, I'm going to be steaming, boys. I will be done. So <laughs> looking forward to free zero and everyone. Because game four, I will be out of the game troops. There's this is the best Scottish jungler in the game right now. Come on. Free zero. <laughs> we are not losing a map. Olaf Gamer, ban the trundle, ban it, boys. <laughs> there we go, there we go, guys. Foxy, does that even leave any questions for you? Great just put it in Division uh, 1 uh, now. Just put it in Division 1 right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no well, questions. No. You'd never well, question the trundle. Outlaw that... Cowboys is next. We're playing Outlaw Cowboys next. They're fourth seed. I'll probably play some meme champ, bring out the Rek'Sai. I'll bring out Tarek Jungle. <laughs> I don't know. Who cares? Once it be right. Outlaw Cowboys, we'll be on to whoever's next. Esports Wales got my eyes on you. Let's go. <laughs> with that, with that confidence, we don't even need to send you to Division One. We'll send you to the LEC straight next season. No worries. Well, exactly. I mean, we've got all these Polish junglers, you know, and I love it. You know, they're selfie, Jankos inspired. And this is the new wave of Scottish junglers. Come on, we have <laughs> got this. There we go. Scotland taking over Europe. You love to hear that. Yeah. Shout out to Paragon6 who made second place thanks to the mighty Booba winning yet another game. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Any questions before I go and drink more sewers, guys? Uh, I, I, think, I think I'm good. You, you covered everything that I yeah. wanted to talk to you about. Exactly. Well, shout out to my teammates, BR God. Sometimes he runs it down, but usually he runs down the top lane. Our solo kills him every time. <laughs> best time, EU West. Ekbar, best coach. Puts in, shout out to Ekbar, by the way. I've seen a few coaches in my time, and he puts in so much time and effort. Like, he actually will screen share your solo queue if you want. He will review the games. He will do the draft and talk to his loading into the game. Dingy's just a great mid laner, just solid man so consistent again you have to ban the victor or we'll run over him our bot lane is just it's just out of this world honestly ken such a chad and wolf is just so attractive like he's just <laughs> such a good guy beautiful that's great to hear that you found a coach that is working well with your team all right cub again congratulations on the great game today on the phenomenal series and i'm looking forward to see you guys dominate in the playoffs and with that Enjoy the rest of the evening, enjoy your drinks, and uh, we'll probably we'll probably talk to each other again at some point. Yeah, thanks very much for the stream. Hope you've enjoyed the game. Thanks for the effort, guys. Oh, it was enjoyable for sure. Nice one. Good to talk to you again, Foxy. Old, yeah. old We're actually old teammates. Shout out yeah. to... I can't even remember our team name. I don't remember it either at this point. Yeah. <laughs> it's like more than a year ago. Too Such many. A yeah. yeah, 2019 yeah. summer. Yeah. You were still playing Trundle, so... You know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, haven't lost that spark. Yeah, what can you say? Cub just loves clubbing. <laughs> True. True. All, All right, right, guys, much love. Thanks very much. Have a good one, Cub. Thank also, you. I just want to give one more shout out. Sorry to Vipers, he also helps just coach here and there. And he, you know, he made me what I am. He brought me into Booba, he just took me under his wing. He just, you know, he's like. He's just my guy. I love him. All right. Beautiful. All right. There you go. Cub, thank you so much for joining us. Have a great evening. Thanks. See you later. Bye. Okay. There you heard it. Absolute confidence coming from Cub, the jungler of BBU, going into the playoffs as the first seed of Group A. And with that, I think that kind of that kind of sells uh, things for the evening, I guess, Foxy. Any yeah. parting words you wanna uh, you wanna leave? I mean, if you look at how crazy that early game or both early games were from Cub, and you listen to that interview, things start to make sense a little bit. Uh, <laughs> certainly, some crazy plays coming out uh, from the side of built by us, and a well-deserved victory.
Absolutely. It was a fantastic matchup, of course, as I mentioned already. GG's as well to a place. They don't need to be ashamed. They are still qualified for playoffs, so we'll yeah. see them again for sure. Maybe even a rematch between these two teams. And maybe Ooh, that would be spicy. And win the next best of five again. Yeah, that would be spicy. Anyway, from us, that's going to be it for tonight. Definitely drop a Valence League a follow. There's going to be a lot more hype League of Legends action coming your way, so don't miss any of it. Until then, I've been Liffy. On my side has been Foxy. And we wish you a great rest of your week. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.